Good evening. God is good. And all the time. And that is his nature. The Mass intention today is for the people. We have no one to clean Holy Spirit Church yet. We need a volunteer or volunteers to clean Holy Spirit Church on a regular basis. If you feel called to serve Christ by cleaning the church on a regular basis, please contact the parish office or sign up at the back of our church. If you are civilly married but have not had your marriage blessed in the Catholic Church yet, please contact Father Patrick or the parish office for assistance to receive the sacrament of marriage. Thank you all to who supported the St. Malachi Golf Tournament today. All ages, young and old alike, are invited to bowl tomorrow from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Crescent Family F Fun Center. Join us for two free games, plus food and drinks. Fun for the whole family, and please bring quarters for their arcade games. Our opening hymn is 315. It seems like we have no musician, so we will all be our choristers and cantors and musicians. So let's sing hymn 315, 315, as we gather at your table. As we gather at your table. let us worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We gather to worship as one family gathered and built by the Word of God and the Holy Eucharist into one, the Kingdom of God. Let us acknowledge our sinfulness before God and before one another, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in my heart.
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, O oh God, who show the light of your truth to those who go astray, so that they may return to the right path, give all who for the faith they profess are accounted Christians the grace to reject whatever is contrary to the name of Christ and to strive after all that does it honor. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, just as from the heavens the rain and snow come down and do not return there till they have watered the earth, making it fertile and fruitful, giving seed to the one who sows and the bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth my word shall not return to me void, but shall do my will, achieving the end for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Okay, the responsorial psalm will be the seed that falls on ground, good ground, will yield a fruitful harvest. The seed that falls on ground will yield a fruitful harvest. You have visited the land and watered it. Greatly have you enriched it. God's water courses are filled. You have prepared the grain. Thus you have prepared the land, drenching its furrows, breaking up its clods, softening it with showers, blessing its yield. You have crowned the year with your bounty, 
and your paths overflow with a rich harvest. The untilled meadows overflow with it, and rejoicing close the hills. The fields are garmented with flocks, and the valleys blanketed with grain. They shout and sing for joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I consider that the sufferings of the present time are as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed for us. For creation awaits with eager expectations the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it, in hopes that creation itself would be set free from slavery to corruption and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves have the first fruits of the Spirit. We also groan within ourselves as we await for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. All who come to him will have life forever. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. On that day, Jesus went out of the house and sat down by the sea. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat down, and the whole crowd stood along the shore. And he spoke to them at length in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, where it had little soil. It sprang up at once, because the soil was not deep. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered for lack of roots. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on rich soil and produced fruit, a hundred or sixty, or thirtyfold, whoever has ears ought to hear. The disciples approached him and said, Why do you speak to them in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To you, to anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, which says, You shall indeed hear, but not understand. You shall indeed look, but never see. Grass is the heart of this people. 
They will hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Hear then the parable of the sower. The seed sown on the path is the one who hears the word of the kingdom without understanding it, and the evil one comes and steals it away. What was sown in his heart? The seed sown on rocky ground is the one who hears the word and receives it at once with joy, but he has no root and lasts only for a time. When some tribulation or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed sown among thorns is the one who hears the word, but then worldly anxiety and the leer of riches choke the word, and it bears no fruit. But the seed sown on rich soil is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields a hundred or a sixty or thirtyfold. The Gospel of the Lord. God is good. And all the time, and that is his nature. Another lengthy gospel, right? Well, the beginning told us that Jesus spoke at length to the people in parables, at length. So he speaks to us also at length. You know, I did not grow up in an area of snow. I was born and raised in Ghana, I had all my education and priestly training in Ghana. I was ordained in Ghana. I worked as a priest in Ghana before um, I came to the United States. The first time I saw snow was when I came here. So when I was reflecting on Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 to 11, and the prophet was saying that, God's word is like rain and snow, and it comes down to water the land and nourishes it for, uh, for crops, um, for the farmer. I asked myself, how does snow nourish the land? How can we plant seed in snow? So I reached out to one of the farmers, one of you, to explain to me how the snow could be beneficial to the land and to farmers. And he explained that, yes, you can sow, you can sow seeds in snow time, especially late snow, around February, March. And he used this term, he said that at the normal farmers usually say, we snow seed. Instead of saying, we sow seed. We snow seed. And he said, particularly, grass seeds do better with the snow. Sometimes you just sprinkle the seeds on the snow, the late snow. Then the snow melts with the seed and immerses the seeds into the cracks in the soil, and as the snow melts away, the soil covers the, 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 the seeds, and because it is already nourished by the moisture of the snow, it sprouts, and it is so wonderful. And he gave another scenario where the snow can be wonderful. He said, uh, mountain snow. The mountain snow melts into the rivers and springs, then provide water for farm work and even for human activities during the summer. 
sometimes around August. Now, so why wouldn't the farmer farm at the beginning of winter, but would wait until the snow is going away before he farms, before he sows the seed? Because every farmer, the best farmers, want the best of conditions, the best of lands, to sow the best seeds so that they can make the best yield. This is how I understand Jesus' parable of the sower. When Jesus was explaining the parable, he did not tell us that the seed, that the, the kingdom of God is something sowed, but he said the seed that fell on the path is the one, that means a person, and the seed that fell on rocky ground is the one. The seed that fell among thorns is the one. And the seed that fell on good soil is the one. So Jesus was addressing this parable to the seeds that he has planted in the kingdom of God. You and I are that seed. So the theme that I want us to reflect on today is the seed. You are the seed that Jesus sows as the seed of the Father's kingdom. And Jesus desires that you grow as a seed and bear fruit hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold, according to your capacity. No matter how much you bear, Jesus appreciates it. But like every good farmer, Jesus wants the best of conditions, the best of land to plant you. He has already planted you. And you and I are not like inanimate plant seeds that have no control over which soil they are planted in or which area of the land they are planted we are rational beings who have the freedom to make choices and decisions. In other words, we can choose which land we are planted in. If we cherish our faith, we will create the rightful condition, the rightful circumstances for our faith to grow. Do you identify with the seed that fell on good soil, good ground, and therefore you are bearing fruit, sometimes 60, sometimes 30, sometimes 100? Oh, praise God! Well, can you also sometimes identify with a seed that fell on the path, or among thorns, or on rocky ground, and you feel the pinch, you do not know what to do because you are not yielding According to capacity as a child of God, it is not too late. What you have to be aware of is that growth in faith comes with intentionality. If you want to grow in faith, you must be intentional in what you do. You do not just drop yourself on any soil. Choose the best soil to ground yourself in. Choose the best soil to ground your family, your parents, your children and grandchildren, your relatives, your relationships, your vocation, your profession. Choose the best soil. Whenever we seek deeper knowledge of Christ and his love through his word, through prayer, through the Eucharist, through the sacraments, in the church, we open ourselves to that rain and snow of God that fall on us unfailingly like the mountain snow, and then we are nourished with grace to bear fruit that will last. Jesus sows the seed. You are that seed. Go cherish the seed. God is good.
and all the time. Friends, God our Father has spoken to us in love. We respond in faith with the Nicene Creed, page 9 of your Messalette, page 9. As we pray, I believe in one God, the Father of all men. Friends, Christ teaches us through parables. Christ is the sower of the seed of God's kingdom, that is you. Let us respond to his work by praying to the Father. For the Pope, bishops, and all priests, that they may govern the God church with God's wisdom, and that every believer be fertile soil for God's word to grow. We pray to the Lord. For our nation and our world, grant us peacemakers who walk the earth planting seeds that heal nations, planting seeds that foster safe and productive communities, and planting seeds that nourish the rare sacredness of family life. We pray to the Lord. That Jesus will be close to the poor, the sick, the dying, the lonely, the unemployed, the addicted, and the homeless, we pray to the Lord. For all who labor every day across our land, performing their duties diligently, may God bless their efforts within just wages, a fair and safe environment, and fruitful outcomes, we pray to the Lord. For those who suffer spiritual hunger, those struggling with sinful habits, who have turned away from God, may they turn their lives around and be filled with God's healing. We pray to the Lord. For our parish family, that will be a vibrant community of prayer, demonstrate solid Christian values, and be generous in sharing our talents for the benefits of others. We pray to the Lord. For all our deceased brothers and sisters, that they may see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. In a moment of silence, place your personal intention before God. Father in heaven, 
your graces always achieve their purposes. As we make these requests in prayer, teach us to value your blessings. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we are for you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we are for you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of the Church, O Lord, as she makes her prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, as we, therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God. Beloved, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Page 178 of the Missalet, and pray the communion antiphon with me. Page 178. Eight. Together, the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for her young. By your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are they who dwell in your house, forever singing your praise. Pray. Having consumed these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may grow through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please sit for a moment. God is good. And all the time, and that is his nature. Today is a very special day um, for me, and I hope for all of us. Um, today is exactly a year ago when I stepped foot in this place to worship with you, to be with you, to serve you. Um, my first anniversary among you. It's, the journey has been um, a very um, uh, inspiring one, uh, very promising. Uh, we, uh, we still have much more fruit to bear. You have so much uh, fruit within you to bear. Uh, but I cannot think of anything but to say thank you for your patience with me, for guiding me, um, for accommodating me, uh, for understanding my limitations, and for the great love that you have showed me. Um, I have never been on my own as a priest, a priest before. I have always worked with the big guys. Uh, so when the bishop <laughs> asked me to come, I was, I was, oh, there is no big guy to look up to again. Uh, but you have held me a lot. And I just want to say thank you. Uh, the journey has just begun. We entrust the rest to God. And when I came, some of you, in fact, many of you were telling me that your heart desire is your children. You uh, care so much about your children and your grandchildren and the young people uh, in the community, in the church. 
the teenagers, the high school uh, children, the young adults. Um, so you were asking me many questions. Father, what can we do? What can we do? And I also put the question back to you. And your suggestion was, why don't we have a parish youth ministry? The pastoral council took this up, and they supported me so much. So we set up a search team and also an interview team um, who came up with something, and thank God, through the search, we now have a substantive coordinator of parish youth and young adult ministries. Um, and I am happy, I feel honored to introduce to you Leah Rogers. Thank you, Father. I am very excited to be the new coordinator for the Youth and Young Adult Ministries. I've been volunteering for the last six months, but I'm excited to just expand and, and keep doing this. I would love every parishioner um, from Holy Spirit and St. Edward's to be involved in the youth ministry in some way. So right now I have four main ways that I think of that I invite you to be involved in this ministry. First, the most obvious way is coming to events. We have all different types of activities and all different age groups that we have and will be expanding, so keep your eye on the bulletin and social media for different events coming up. If you are a young adult or you have a family or kids or teens, we have activities tailored for you, but we also have events for all ages, so we would love to see all of you there. The second way is to volunteer. We could definitely use your help if you have a skill or something you'd like to teach or an activity that you'd like to see happen. Just let me know and I'd love to support you in trying to make that work. And even if you don't have any specific ideas, um, we need people to help set up and clean up and do all kinds of different things. So if you want to help, we have a place for you for sure. But even if you don't see yourself coming to the events, um, either as a participant or as a volunteer, there's other ways to be involved as well. We could always use donations to keep our activities free and to keep expanding. So if you feel God is calling you to donate, just reach out to me or Father Patrick and check the bulletin. We'll have an Amazon wish list soon and some new uh, donation opportunities. And the last very important way to be involved is through prayer. So even if you're not going to do anything else with the youth ministry, we would love for you to pray for us. Um, please pray that the staff, the facilitators, and the participants, that we may all walk together on our journey to the Lord, that we may grow in love for him and community with each other as we strive to do God's will. Please don't hesitate to come up to me after Mass or whenever you see me and introduce yourself if we haven't met yet. Um, you can give me your contact information and I can keep you updated and involved. So I'm very thankful for your support in this mission and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good and that is his nature. Thank you, Leah, and thank you all for your patience. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. <laughs>